nigga, I'm on that next now. I'm sold 3,008, you sold 2,000 and late. I got that boom, 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 that future boom, boom, boom. Let me get in that. Hi guys, it's Shishka Bobber here coming right at you with another Boom Beach video. Now guys, today today's video is super special. I'm also super sick, so I'm going to do my best not to cough through it again. Okay, obviously guys, hello, the update has hit. Now, um, is it a hit or is it not? I'm not so sure, but I'm having fun with it nonetheless. Today's video is all about the Lasertron. This is Lasertron 101. Welcome to class, my, my pupils. Now, um... We've got a lot of ground to cover. We can't we can't go through it all. There's probably going to be a Lasertron 201 and 301, but uh, basically, the first thing I want to point out to you guys today is uh, notice all of my landing craft are loaded with Lasertron. Now, yes, it's, I'm featuring these uh, troops tonight, but um, that's not the reason why they're loaded. Do you know why they're loaded? Anyone? Anyone? I'll tell you why it's loaded. It's because. They're more expensive than cryos, guys. They are more expensive than cryos. If you see, the cryoneer will actually save me money. Let's go ahead and load the cryoneer. And then now let's go back. Well, I apologize for the sniffles, guys. Now let's go back and look. Look, look, look. The Lasertron is 13,500 more than the Cryoneer. What does this mean? What does this mean, you ask? What it means is that you can save more money because you've got more of it locked up in your Lasertrons. Guys, if anything, I think I've found the best value for this whole troop. Now, don't get me wrong, it's fun, but after experimenting with it enough at max level, it's just not worth it, I'm afraid. But. But, 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 before we get to the end, in the beginning, we have to go through the entire process. You can reach your own conclusion. Now, I'm telling you, though, right now, the best thing about them is you can protect more gold with them. Does it justify their 1 million gold per day use? Uh, no, I don't think so. So in the end, probably not. But if you're like me and you're going to buy them anyway and experiment with them, at least get the most value out of them, which is to leave them in your landing craft. Unfortunately, guys, you're not actually able to save them. You see, I tried to do it here in my, my pew pew. I'll do it again. Pew pew. But you see, it doesn't save. It doesn't save because it's a temporary troop. So you, literally, you will literally have to manually load it every, every time. It's kind of a pain. But, but here's the thing, guys. It's actually really important right now because like I saw coming, the gold is going to be really tight. Uh, you can see right now that the gold that I have is is not very is not much. And I've got enough just to get my plans for the next day, but um, I don't want anyone taking my gold right now. The entire archipelago you're going to discover in the next day or two is going to be very starved of gold. Everyone will be spending their gold and there won't be much gold to be had. So be very, very frugal with your gold. But let's get back onto the laser trons, guys. Um, okay. I've got something really special set up for you today. I've done another um, base builder base just specifically for this, for testing out the Cryoneers. What we're going to do is some range testing, guys. We're going to need to figure out exactly where these guys fire and how far they fire. So, yeah, aspect ratio is messed up. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll describe the base once we get into it. Starting it up right now. Now, okay, here's what we see. We're starting off, we've got a flamethrower on the right, we've got a uh, machine gun, followed by a cannon, and then a mortar, and then a sniper tower. Now I want you to know, these were all set down based on their range. The maximum range that each one of these has hits just the top of the beach, basically where you see those landmines in front. That is the max range, so you'll see that the flamethrower has the shortest range, the uh, Machine gun is the next, and the cannon is the next, and both the mortar and the sniper tower have the exact same range. In case you didn't know, now you know. Um, we've also set up another little test. In front of this cannon, we've placed some shock mines. We're simply going to demonstrate that the laser does not hit any targets in front of the target. But we've also got a whole lot of shock mines behind the cannon because we're going to measure exactly how far it goes. And I want you to know that each one of these uh, normal landmines that are to the side, they, they mark five. They mark five shock mines. You can see right there. So it'll help us when we count the destruction. So guys, and I, I want to make sure that we're more or less lined up head on with every unit. Uh, okay, let's just get into it. Let's just drop it and see what happens. I'm going to drop it right in the back if I can. Okay. Having difficulties tapping. And uh, here we go. You see it destroys the Hammerman statue, no problem. Uh, each one of these defense towers or uh, buildings have about 6,000 health. I scaled them all that way so they take four or five shots to destroy. 
Okay, just like that, flamethrower goes down. We're gonna reflare because I want to get centered up. I'm trying to center myself with the mine. Now, let's pay attention. Sometimes, yeah, you see that? He just he just pathed off to the side, to the right side. It's really bizarre, but like right before they shoot, a lot of times they like to move. This can be problematic, as you will hopefully see as we get to things that have longer range. They can actually move into range. Now, I'm not quite sure. Sometimes they move, sometimes they don't. It seems like it might be, uh, I don't know, structure dependent, like the machine gun that he always seems to move. That's kind of a bad flare, but that good enough. Okay, look at that, guys. Look at that. You see how far it went? It went all the way to the 15th mark. So what that actually means is that the range is 16, because you have to remember the cannon is 3x3, three three, so we have to assume that it's targeting the center square of the 3x3 three three grid. Therefore, it already has to go one square just to leave the cannon. So we've already proven right now that this is has a range of 16 tiles in total. That's really impressive. Oh, oh, oh. Need to get back onto my target. It doesn't really matter too much, but I always want to start these things out at the uh, at the max range. Okay, here we go. Now you can see it is not in range of the mortar, guys. This is amazing. However, he might move. I've seen him move in previous tests, and then, like, he will move into the range of the mortar. But at max range, max distance, guys, it outranges mortars. And you know what? It actually outranges uh, sniper towers, too. Because like we've already talked about, the mortars and sniper towers have the exact same range. So look at this. He's not getting hit not getting hit at all pretty amazing now the rest of this test i'm not even sure why i set it up because we know we know that the uh boom cannon will outrange him we also know that the shock launcher and rocket launcher will outrange him just going to clear out some of these mines honestly i should have used the uh the cryo bomb i'm just not used to thinking about it but we'll see what happens we'll see what happens He's going to come towards the boom cannon, although the boom cannon might be a bit distracted. We can get rid of those distractions, though. Just smoke them. Anyway, you know he gets hit, guys. You know he gets hit. So let's uh, let's just forget about it now. That, that was a great test, though. So what, what we learned was uh, the, the laser splash or the laser slide i don't know what you want to call it but the it, it goes a total of 16 tiles behind him as we saw with the mine setup it outranges practically everything the only thing that it doesn't outrange is boom cannons rocket launchers and uh, shock launchers now of course prototype weapons he's not going to outrange those either uh it'd be interesting to test them with a laser do they have the same range i'm not i'm not sure my guess would be yes my guess would be yes now, uh, what else can I show you guys? Well, I'll tell you what. I was so anxious this morning when I saw the update hit. Oh, yeah, look at that. We've got our new little trader boat. Um, I was so anxious this morning when I saw the update hit. I just had to start an op, and I just wanted to get in there and, and just try it out. So I did exactly what I thought I was going to do, which was a slight variation to Bullet's Best. I replaced one boat of Grens with one of these uh, laser trons. It was okay. I was unboosted. Let's just get into it. I've got the replay here. Um... I went against Paradox, which uh, it's dead now, but had 164 task force points on it. This is Operation Tinderbox. You can see the troop load out here. I was the opener on this attack, and my goal was just to open it up for the next guy. Tag team operation. So my GBE targets were going to be these shock launchers right around the core. But here comes the launch. Yeah, I'm already dumping a bunch of GBE. I think I went one barrage on each one out of the uh, shock launchers. No, actually, I did two barrages right in between uh, each one of the shock launchers. Now, anyway, we see with the splash damage of the Grens and the uh, the laser... i got to come up with a term with this. The, the laser accuracy, the, the laser fire trail. Laser fire trail. I like that. We'll go with that. Laser fire trail of the... Uh, Laser Tron just clears those power cells out like nothing, guys. Absolutely, just like butter, melting butter. Okay, we're reflaring over to the side here because we simply just want to get out of the range of stuff that hurts us, and we want to destroy more things. We want to farm more GBE. We want to work on these shock launchers a bit more as we as we make our way around the side of the base here. Now, um, again, we're we're right where we want to be. The, honestly, I think the Grenadier Splash is proving to be a bit more effective than the uh, Laser Fire Trail, but but 
it's impressive nonetheless. We did get a little bit of damage on the uh, Doom Cannon with the, with the laser. Now, Bullet has the attention of the Doom Cannon, so there's nothing to worry about there. Everyone's nice and bunched up and happy. That laser really carries a long way, and as we know, guys, it is 16 tiles. I didn't know that at the time. Not that it matters. I mean, it wouldn't have really changed anything, but it goes a long, incredible, incredible way. Um, now, we're, our medics are getting a little heated up there with the flamethrower splash. Uh, troops are starting to fan out a little bit. Bullet's health is doing okay, but... Uh, Again, we're, we're taking a pretty moderate amount of damage. Well, I say that, but then Bullet is getting awfully low. Looks like we might even have to have gone for an energy drink or something. Um, again, guys, this was unboosted. So, I mean, just my normal my normal statue buffs, which are okay. I'm running eight offensive statues. But uh, anyway, going right through. Let's, let's double time it. Let's double time it. I think I think that one of the things with Lasertrons, guys, they're just they're a little bit boring. You know, it's another it's another Team Ed type thing. Actually, it's it's a little bit worse than Team Ed in terms of this the speed. It's so darn slow, and it takes forever to kill stuff. But it's cool, man. It's new. You know, we got to try it out. Okay, yeah, if you notice, that second shock bomb was, or cryo bomb, total fail. I meant to release critters, but uh, didn't register or something. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll just we'll just claim an input device error. Yeah, it definitely wasn't wasn't me. No, no, no. Shish Kebabber doesn't make mistakes. Now, as you can see, dude, we've got, the two, uh, we've got the two shock launchers down. We're moving in. We're trying to clear as much as we can, keep all of our troops up as much as possible. But, uh... We're, at this point, we're just kind of focusing on taking out rocket launchers. I think I'm trying to get this last one right here right before time expires. And, uh, well, it worked out. We, we get it. And uh, overall, honestly, pretty pretty successful attack. Um, we were able to clear a very good path for the next uh, task force member to come right in and just polish off the core. So uh, I used it. I used it in an operation. It kind of worked, but I, I mean, I barely used it. I just used one. I have been messing around with it, guys, on my map. And... Uh, the the GBE cost is just is just so darn high. Like, it's it's really hard to work in unless I'm fully boosted, which I haven't done yet. Uh, I will I will make a video soon of being fully boosted, but not right now. It's it's very late for me. I really got to get some sleep so I can get better. I'm going on vacation in a day, guys. But uh, I'll tell you what, coming up, coming up, what I definitely want to do as well with more uh, of this Lasertron insights, more of these Lasertron classes. I plan to go into a DPS comparison troop by troop. Um, just to just to really break it down, try to get the pros and cons of each one. I'm really curious to compare it to Grens because I think this thing replaces Grens uh, the most. They, you know, you guys realize that they outrange Grens too because Grens do get hit by sniper towers and mortars, so that's really cool. And uh, beyond that, I would like to start getting into some troop uh, setups. I've heard a few going around. I've heard of a two 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 uh, four twos tank Gren healer. Laser has worked pretty well. Uh, Zemot mentioned that on a lower level account, he was running, I think, what was it? He only had seven boats. So it was five boats of healers and two boats of the Lasertrons. And apparently they were just wiping out everything on his map. So there, there, there's definitely some things to play around with. I think at high level play, though, it's, it's really not an option. And I really think that's probably why they actually increased the GBE from 15 to 18 on the developer build, because I don't think they wanted this to affect the, the higher... Uh, VP range because I think a lot of people might have been upset by some gimmicky troop that only lasts for two weeks that messes up all the ranks and the ladders and I, I kind of get it because really to get like really high up I'm not that high up I'm to get to like 2,000 range and things like that or even 1,500 you have got to do an incredible amount of planning and saving and uh, just get, just to get to that point because it, it involves saving all your power powder so if they did something to just really toss things up and mess it up, that could just potentially upset a lot of people. So I get it because months of planning could just get destroyed by some stupid laser beam tank destroying all these heavily iced bases. So I'm pretty sure, to be honest, guys, it's not going to be a real viable troop. But it's fun. It's fun. We're going to keep experimenting with it. We're going to keep learning more about it. And we're really just looking forward to the to the prototype troops to come in the future. I know we read about the one uh, from the release notes today that was going to be a tank that shoots critters. Uh, hello, RZCM. That's just going to be awesome, guys. Like I think that's going to be probably the best one from what I was reading. But uh, anyway, guys, enough of your time. Enough of your time. I thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a super fantastic fantastic awesome day a day that's full of health and energy because I'm, I'm lacking both of those right now and uh, as always as always guys you know what be kind to others especially this time of year and uh, you know we can't forget of course it's December and December is boom beach month so 
you know, you need to share this game with a friend, family member, whatever, when you travel back home. Share the love that we all enjoy with this game with someone else so we can keep this game strong and keep all this content coming to you because we'll have more fresh eyes wanting to watch us, wanting to watch these ugly faces. Anyway, so on that note, guys, like I was saying before, be kind to others and uh, have a great day.